So in the, in the Garden of Eden, there's Adam and Eve, right, the primordial human beings, and there's a, a walled garden, that's paradise, paradise means walled garden, and Eden means well-watered place, and so there's this idea that the proper habitat of human beings is an amalgam of social structure and, that, and nature, and that's exactly right, because that's what we live in, right, we live in a, we never live in nature, and we never live in society, we live in an amalgam of society and nature, that's the human environment, so it's a walled garden, alright, and so it's a productive, well-watered place where we could thrive, it's safe, and it's ruled over by a, a father figure in this, particular, in this particular story and that's like the, you could think about that as the spirit of civilization, that's at least one way of considering it so, um, well there's a snake in the garden and it's there unbeknownst to God, roughly speaking although he's, he knows everything, so I guess he probably knows about the snake too and he tells Adam and Eve not to interact with it, fine, and they do, and the snake wakes them up, right, because when they interact with the snake they're given a fruit that opens their eyes and makes them aware that they're naked and vulnerable and then dooms them to work, well I'll tell you the whole story much later in the course but I want to give you an overview of it now, but then there's this really strange idea that developed over the course of the development of not only Christianity but Judaism and, and a number of other religions that fed into the mainstream of Christian ideas including Zoroastrianism there's an idea that, that emerged across a very long period of time that the snake in the garden was the same as Satan, the, the source of all evil and I've been trying to figure out for the longest period of time why in the world the manifestation of what's essentially a representation of a predator, so that's this snake and you know, the snake is associated with trees, well yes, the reason for that in all likelihood is that we dwelt in trees, right, and snakes like trees, and they're around trees, and they can climb trees, and, and the snake was a typical predator on our, on our ancient relatives, but, and so that's fine, so you can see that that representation makes perfect sense, there's predators that lurk in the garden, yes, obviously, if you interact with them they wake you up, well they better wake you up, because if they don't wake you up when you interact with them, then you get eaten, so it's probably just as well to wake up, even though there's painful consequences associated with becoming conscious, and that manifests itself immediately in the, in the story of, 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 of Adam and Eve, but then there's this weird association, it's, it's very undeveloped in the biblical stories that, 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 that are part and parcel of this line of thinking it was more like a consequence of a cloud of mythological stories that surrounded it but the reason for that I think is, is that imagine that what human beings were trying to puzzle out was the nature of the predator ok so on one level of analysis the predator is the thing that slinks along the ground and that threatens you and also it's the thing that's your mortal enemy and that wakes you up but then that's one conceptualization of predator, and fair enough, you can identify it and you can take precautionary measures but a better conceptualization of predator might be, where does it come from? let's say it's a snake, well there's a layer of snakes somewhere and so if we want to get rid of the snake, we shouldn't be conceptualizing it as a snake we should be conceptualizing it as one manifestation of a layer of snakes, and what we should do is go down, follow the damn snake wherever it goes, and find its lair, and wipe out all of the snakes, and that's, that's a more abstract representation, right, it's not predator anymore, it's the source of predation, and so if you want to solve the predator problem permanently, you don't kill the snake, you get rid of all the snakes, ok, so fine, so, and, and people are pretty damn good at that, and that's why you have stories of people like St. Patrick, who chased all the snakes out of Ireland, and all sorts of saints were snake eradication saints, and well, there's a variety of reasons for that, but then you might think, ok, well the worst predator is the lair of snakes, right, but then you might think, well wait a minute, the worst predator isn't the lair of snakes, maybe the worst predator is the enemies that come to attack us, and those are human enemies, and so what we do is we defend ourselves against the human enemies, we put walls around our cities, we fortify our our land, and we defend ourselves against the evil that's lurking in other people's hearts, and so that's like a higher order snake, and then we build these walls around us, and what's inside gets larger and larger and larger, and then what happens is the snakes start popping up inside the cities, because you know, we've pushed all the, we've, we've protected ourselves from all the evil that lurks outside, but we've now created a space where 
that evil can manifest itself inside so there's criminals inside the city and there's people who want to bring you down and there's malevolence within the city, not only outside so then there's the, the problem of the snake that's closer to you and then there's the ultimate problem which is the snake that lives in your heart right, and that's each individual's capacity for evil and then that, that was conceptualized as a transcendent spirit right, so that's the spirit of Satan who's the, who's the adversary of the hero the adversary of the hero and that's why there's an association between the snake in the garden and this, this great series of mythologies about the existence of evil itself it's a consequence of our continued capacity to abstract we started using the predator detection system to detect snakes and maybe you know, predatory cats and maybe birds of prey and all that but that didn't solve the bloody problem because just because you hid from the predatory bird today didn't mean the bloody thing wasn't going to be back tomorrow and tomorrow starts to matter as you get smarter and then once you're on that pathway and you're starting to think about abstractly about the predator the nature of what constitutes the predator starts to become because you're trying to solve it across all situations simultaneously it starts to become very much more abstract and it ends up being something like a personality like an eternal personality and an eternal personality that has its effect on everyone all the time so, and so it's so interesting to see those ideas because they basically evolved people did not understand those ideas as they produced them right, it was all put forward in, in a massive mythological context in, in a rich storied context and the stories were as conscious as the information got it was never articulated past the level of story so, remarkable absolutely remarkable